What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Scallon Al here, and uh, last time we left off on Book 11 of the Analects of Confucius, and today we'll be picking up on Book 12, so let's jump straight into it. Uh, number 1, <clears throat> Book 12. Yan Hui asked about humaneness. The master said to subdue oneself and return to ritual is to practice humaneness. If someone subdued himself and returned to ritual for a single day, then all under heaven would ascribe to humaneness to him. For the practice of humaneness does not surely proceed from the man himself, or does it proceed from others? Yan Hui said, I beg to ask for the details of this. The master said, do not look at what is contrary to ritual. Do not listen to what is contrary to ritual. Do not speak what is contrary to ritual, and make no movement which is contrary to ritual. Yan Hui said, although I am not clever, I beg to put this advice into practice. Number two, Zong Gong asked about humaneness. The master said, when you're away from home, behave as if receiving an important guest. Employ the people as if you were officiating at a great sacrifice. Do not impose on others what you would not like yourself. Then there will be no resentment against you, either in the state or in the family. Zong Gong said, although I am not clever, I beg to put this advice into practice. Number three, Sima Nyu asked about humaneness. Everyone's asking about humaneness today. Good damn. Sima Nyu asked about humaneness. The master said, the humane person is hesitant in his speech. He said, hesitant in his speech. Is that all that is meant by humaneness? The master said, to do it is difficult. So in speaking about it, can one avoid being hesitant? Number four, damn, that's paradoxical as hell. Number four, Sima Nyu asked about the gentleman. The master said, the gentleman is neither worried nor afraid. He said, neither worried nor afraid. Is that all that is meant by the gentleman? The master said, if when he looks within, he is not diseased, then what does he worry about and what does he fear? Other men all have brothers, said Sima Nyu in his distress, but I alone have none. Zishia said, I have heard that death and life are predestined and riches and honors depend on heaven. If a gentleman is reverent and avoids error, if he is courteous in his dealings with others, and observes the obligations of ritual, then all within the four seas are his brothers. Why should a gentleman be distressed at not having brothers? Number six, Zai Zhang asked about intelligence. The master said, if slanders which gradually seep in or accusations like flesh wounds do not get anywhere with one, one may definitely be called intelligent. But if slanders which gradually seep in or accusation like flesh wounds do not get anywhere with one, one may definitely also be called distant. Number seven, Zai Gong asked about government. The master said, if there is enough food and if there are enough weapons, the people will put their trust in it. Zai Gong said, suppose you definitely had no alternative but to give up one of these three, which would you relinquish first? The master said, I would give up weapons. Zai Gong said, Suppose you definitely had no alternative but to give up one of the remaining two, which would you relinquish first? The master said, I would give up food. From of old death has come to all men, but a people will not stand if it lacks trust. Number eight. Ji Zai Chang said, a gentleman is merely the stuff he is made of. Why take account of culture? Zai Gong said, it is a pity that you said that, sir, about the gentleman, since a team of four horses will not catch up with the tongue. Culture is just as important as the stuff one is made of, and the stuff one is made of is just as important as culture. The skin of a tiger or leopard is no different from the skin of a dog or a sheep. Number nine, Duke I inquired of Master Yu, the year has seen famine and the revenues are inadequate. So what should be done in such circumstances? Master Yu replied, why not take one-tenth of their produce in tax? He said, with two-tenths, I would still not have enough. So in that case, what would a one-tenth tax achieve? The reply was, if the hundred surnames have plenty, then with whom will your lordship share insufficiency? But if the hundred surnames do not have plenty, with whom will you share your plenty? Number 10. Zai Zhang asked about exalting virtue and clearing up confusions. The master said exalting virtue consists of making loyalty and good faith into one's main principles and moving towards rightness. 
If you love someone, you want him to live, but if you hate someone, you want him to die. If having want him to live, you also want him to die, this is confusion, not for the sake of riches, but merely for a change. Number 11. Duke Jing of Qi asked Master Kong about government. Master Kong replied, let a ruler be a ruler, a subject a subject, a father a father, and a son a son. Excellent, said the Duke. Indeed, if a ruler be not a ruler, a subject be not a subject, a father be not a father, and a son be not a son, even if there is grain, shall I manage to eat it? Number 12. The master said the one who might settle a lawsuit on the basis of a partial submission would be you, wouldn't it? Xilu avoided sleeping on a promise. Number 13. The master said at hearing legal proceedings, I am no different from anybody else, but what is surely necessary is to bring it about that there is no litigation. 14. Sai Zhang asked about government. The master said when dwelling on a matter, avoid becoming bored, and when taking action on it, observe the requirements of loyalty. 15. The master said if wide-ranging studies in culture are restrained by the requirements of ritual, surely one cannot rebel against this, can one? 16. The master said the gentleman brings to completion the fine qualities in others and does not bring to completion the bad qualities in others. The small man does the opposite of this. 17. G. Kang Z asked Master Kong about government. Master Kong replied, to govern means to correct. If you take the lead by being correct, who will dare not be corrected? 18. G. Kang Z was worried about thieves, so he put a question to Master Kong. Master Kong replied, if you yourself did not desire these things, they would not steal them even if they were rewarded. 19. G. Kang Z asked Master Kong about government, saying, suppose I were to kill those who lack the way in order to advance those who have the way, how would you be? Master Kong replied, you are running the government, so what is the point of killing? If you desire good, the people will be good. The nature of the gentleman is as the wind, and the nature of the small man is as the grass. When the wind blows over the grass, it always bends. 20. Zai Zhang asked what a public servant would be like so that he may be called successful. The master said, whatever is it that you mean by successful? Zai Zhang replied, certain to be heard about whether employed in the state or in a noble family. The master said, this is reputation, not success. Now the successful man is by nature straightforward and fond of what is right. He examines what people say and notices their looks and is anxious to give priority to others. He is bound to be successful whether employed in the state or in a noble family. But the man of reputation assumes an air of humaneness, although his conduct belies it, and he does not feel any misgivings about persisting in this. Whether employed in the state or in a noble family, he will certainly achieve reputation. 21. Fan Chi was in attendance at an outing below where the dancing sacrifice took place. He said, I venture to ask about exalting virtue, reforming wickedness, and clearing up confusions. The master said, an excellent question indeed. Putting the job first and what you get out of it last, is this not exalting virtue? Attacking one's own bad qualities and avoiding attacks on other people's bad qualities, is this not the way to reform wickedness? To be oblivious of one's own person and even of one's own parents all because of a morning's anger, is this not a confusion? 22. Fan Chi asked about humaneness. The master said it is to love others. He asked about understanding. The master said it is to understand others. Fan Chi had not yet fathomed his meaning, so the master said, if one raises the straight and puts them above the crooked, one can make the crooked become straight. When Fan Chi withdrew, he met Zixia. I was granted an interview by the master just now, he said, and I asked him about understanding. The master said, if one raises the straight and puts them above the crooked, one can make the crooked become straight. What did he mean? A rich saying indeed, said Zixia. When Shun possessed all under heaven, he made a choice from among the multitude and raised up Gao Yo, and the inhumane were banished. And when Tang possessed all under heaven, he made a choice from among the multitude and raised up Yi Yin, and the inhumane were banished. 23. Zigong asked about friends. The master said loyalty provide them with good information and guide them skillfully.
If this is no good, then desist. Do not humiliate yourself through them. And the last one, 24, Master Zhang said, the gentleman collects friends through culture and through his friends supports humaneness. And that's gonna be it for today. Just chapter 12 for now. We'll uh, pick up on chapter 13 next time. Thank you guys. Be sure to uh, donate to our Patreon if you like what you heard. And uh, I know this book is a little hard to listen to. It's hard to read. Um, but the uh, next book that we'll be picking up is either going to be the good old bread book, uh, Peter Kropotkin, uh, Conquest of Bread, or it's going to be uh, Vladimir Lenin's State and Revolution. So we'll figure out uh, which one of those are going to be next. But first, we got to plow through this book. So I'll see you guys next time for the next chapter. <laughs>